What we just saw, cut in half now, is cosmic spheres of time. Because as we look out in space, we are looking back in time. The light from the galaxies far away left billions of years ago. So we see these galaxies as they were when the light left them billions of years ago. But we're putting them, we're putting these images, which are from Hubble Space Telescope, where these objects now are, according to our best calculations. Today, we're just seeing light from the sun, nearby things. But we are also seeing light that left a long time ago. This sphere represents light that left when the Earth and Sun were forming about four and a half billion years ago. The next sphere represents the light that's reaching us that left when big galaxies like ours first started to take the shapes that we see them to have today. Beyond that, these galaxies look very odd. These are galaxies as they appeared in the first billion years or so. Beyond that, beyond about half a billion years from the Big Bang, we don't see any galaxies because they haven't had a chance to form yet. At least we don't have instruments that can see them yet. Maybe the next generation of telescopes, infrared telescopes, will let us look a little further. These are the real dark ages, the cosmic dark ages, before the universe lit up with lots of stars. Then there's, of course, the colorful microwave background radiation, the heat radiation of the Big Bang, and the cosmic horizon, beyond which we cannot see even in principle. This is the unknowable part. We get this sort of information from our greatest telescopes, and this is the deepest image that was taken with our sharpest view, the Hubble Space Telescope. It's a remarkable image, but it's also a little misleading because, as I said before, it only shows half of 1% of what's actually there. The other 99.5% of the universe is invisible. We use this picture from the back of the dollar bill, or the back of the Great Seal of the United States, to represent that. The big part at the bottom, about 98%, is just hydrogen and helium, which came out of the Big Bang. Almost all the helium was actually made in the first few minutes. The first stars were just made out of that hydrogen and helium. And all the other heavy elements, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, iron, all the things that we're made of, except for hydrogen, were made in stars or in the processes that accompany the death of stars. All the elements of the periodic table, including the zinc and copper that in the wrong place can do some damage. The eye, from this point of view, represents the fact that all intelligent creatures have to be made of these heavy elements, which could only be formed in stars. So we, our star stuff, our imaginations, really resulted from things that happened in the stars, plus maybe some other things. Now, where's the rest of the universe? Notice that that pyramid was sitting on the ground. What's underneath? There's about 10 times as many invisible atoms as the visible stuff, the stars, etc. It's not stars, it's not lit up by stars, it's out in between the galaxies. But the bulk of the matter in the universe is something completely different. It's not atoms, it's not even made of any of the parts of atoms. We don't know what it is, but we know enough about how it behaves that we can actually model it quite accurately. And in fact, run big supercomputer simulations that describe how this cold, dark matter works and also the dark energy. So, let me show you how that works. First, though, let's picture it. Since the universe is mostly made of dark matter and dark energy, we can call it the double dark theory of the universe. The technical name is Lambda CDM. Lambda was the Greek letter that Einstein used to represent the simplest form of dark energy which is a cosmological constant. And cold dark matter is this term that I introduced back in 1983 for this stuff that is most of the matter in the universe. Now, why would anyone believe that this is true, that most of the universe is invisible? Well, there's lots of evidence. The evidence comes from the fact that the stars going around galaxies 
go at the same speed once you're away from the center, regardless of how far away you are, unlike the planets, which go slower and slower the further away you are from the sun. And the bending of light around galaxies, and lots of other evidence. This is some of the most impressive evidence. This is the data on the cosmic background radiation from the WMAP satellite, and then here from ground-based detectors at the South Pole. The blue curve was calculated before any of this data was available. But every single data point, as it's come in, agrees with the predictions. And I could show you many other curves of this sort that represent different predictions from this theory. And the data, as it's coming in, is exactly in accord. There are no discrepancies. And as you see, this is a somewhat surprising set of predictions. This says that the typical size of the spots is about one degree. Not half a degree, but then a third of a degree is favored. It can't be a coincidence that this really works. So how do we picture the whole universe? Imagine that the entire universe is an ocean of dark energy. On that ocean sail billions of ghostly ships made of dark matter. So it's dark matter ships and a dark energy ocean, and the visible matter is just half a percent. It's the beacons at the tops of the masts of the biggest ships, and that's all we see. Now, here's how the dark matter expands. Let's look at a picture of a computer simulation of the expanding universe. It stopped expanding, though, in the center, and now you see that things are falling together, but these parts are flying away. This could be the dark matter halo that hosts a single big galaxy like the Milky Way. Let's recapitulate. Expansion, expansion, expansion. But then, this central region didn't expand anymore, and in fact, things are falling into it. It's actually contracting. But this part is still flying away. Nancy Abrams suggested a wonderful terminology for this. This region is held together by gravity and is not expanding. Our galaxy is not expanding. The local group is not expanding. But the space between these gravitationally bound regions is expanding faster and faster. So this part is tamed by gravity. But this wild space in between the gravitationally bound regions, that's what's being torn apart by the dark energy. How big is a galaxy compared to these gigantic uh, computer simulated dark matter halos? Well, our galaxy is about 100,000 light years across, the visible part, and this is about the size of the dark matter halo, more than 10 times bigger. Now, how does this fit in to the really grand scale, the sort of thing I showed you when we mapped all those galaxies? So that is from the biggest high-resolution computer simulation that has yet been run. It was run on one of the fastest supercomputers in the world by my team, and uh, it represents a region of the universe a billion light years across. Let's look at a particular part of that that's about 100 million light years across, where we visualize what it looks like today at the present epoch uh, in some detail. So there's these filaments, and where they cross, there's a big dark matter halo that would host not a galaxy, but maybe 50 or 100 big galaxies like the Milky Way, a great cluster. There's another cluster. So let's move in for a close-up. We can study statistically how the galaxies are distributed in these computer simulations, and we can compare that statistically to how the galaxies are distributed in the observed universe from these big mapping projects. The agreement is, as far as we can tell, perfect. We have not found any discrepancies at all.
And of course, we've allowed this, we've, we've presented this data to the world, it's freely available, and everybody else has a chance to see if they can find any problems. So far, none have been reported. So this is the invisible universe. This is what the 99.5% looks like. Of course, you can't see the dark energy, but it was included in the calculations. It's very pretty, I think you'll agree. We were pleased that uh, this is getting out into the popular culture a little bit. So uh, Bjork asked our permission and, and a copy of a high-resolution version of this, and she's been showing it in her concerts. That's uh, from her website. Mm -hmm.